Hello everyone. So in this lecture, we are going to talk about the amino acids and we will discuss about the different classes and individual structures of these amino acids. But first, let us see the general definition of an amino acid. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. Now, what does that mean? It means that different amino acids, they join together to form long chains and these long chains are known as the proteins. Therefore, these are the building components of proteins. Now, all the different proteins that exist in the biological bodies, they are composed of 20 standard amino acids. So, in total, there are 20 standard amino acids and all these 20 amino acids, they join together in different permutations and combinations to form millions of different proteins. Now, how these amino acids are differing from each other, that depends on the R group. And what R group we are talking about? We will understand this by first analyzing the basic general structure of an amino acid. So as the name itself is suggesting that this has something to do with the amino group and the acidic group. Now, if you see here in this structure, you will see that this is the center carbon. This is the chiral carbon. And at one position, there is this one acidic group, which is the carboxylic group. On one side, there is this amino group. On one side, there is this hydrogen. And there is this one side, which is having an R side chain. Now, this R group is going to vary in all the 20 different amino acids. And due to this variation in the R group, all the 20 amino acids differ from each other. So basically, this component of the amino acid is same in all the amino acids, but this R group is differing. You see that there is an amino group, which is providing the basic character to the amino acid. And there is a carboxylic acid group, which is providing the acidic nature to the amino acid. So if I try to um, shorten it, this is the general structure of an amino acid. Now let us move forward and understand more. Now, under the physiological pH range, which means in, in the biological conditions, both the carboxylic acid and the amino groups of these amino acids, they are completely ionized. As you see in the previous figure, uh, we saw that there is no charge present on these groups. We have written these groups as whole. But when we talk about the biological conditions and the natural conditions, these groups, they are existing in their ionic forms. So you see that there is this NH3 positive and this is the carboxylic ion, COO negative. So this is how the amino acid is existing inside the natural bodies. Now, what exactly is a molecule which has both the charges, that is a positive charge and a negative charge called? Such a molecule is known as a Zwitter ion. So Zwitter ion, is the molecule that has positive and negative charges both present on itself. And because the amino acid under physiological conditions is having both the charges, therefore you can say that amino acids are existing in their Zwitter ion form. Now the amino acids, they're amphoteric in nature. That is, they can act both as an acid and a base. And I have just discussed it in the previous slide. Now, talking about the bonding between the different amino acids when they are linked together. So the bond that is present between two individual amino acids is known as a peptide bond. So if someone asks you that what is the bond present between the different amino acids in a protein, the answer is a peptide bond. So let us see here in this reaction, you see that this is the amino acid one and this is the amino acid two. The structure is same. The only thing that is differing between these two amino acids is the R group. In the first one, we have the R1. In the second one, we have the R2. The other groups are exactly the same. Now, when these two amino acids have to join together, condensation process takes place and there is a release of a water molecule from here and this group and this group. That is the C-O-N-H bond is formed. Now this bond is formed by the linkage of this carbon and nitrogen. And this bond is known as the peptide 
bond. You see that, right? So that is how the amino acids are combining together. Now, the proteins, they can be dipeptides, tripeptides, oligopeptides, polypeptides. So basically, dipeptides are the peptides in which there are two amino acids present, tripeptides where three amino acids are linked together, and oligopeptides where it's approximately less than 10, and if there are more than 10, then it is a polypeptide. And polypeptides are linear polymers, which means that they are having a linear structure. And we just talked about that there are 20 standard amino acids, but if we talk about the amino acids in total that exist in the nature, there are 300 of them. But 20 are standard amino acids, as you can see on the screen, and we will be talking about these in detail. So amino acids, they have been classified into different categories. The 20 amino acids that we've been talking about, they have been divided into different categories on certain criteria. So first is the amino acid classification based on the structure. So on the basis of structure, we can categorize these amino acids to understand their nature a little bit better. So the first category is aliphatic amino acids, which means that these amino acids have the R chain, the R group that we were talking about as the aliphatic chains. And these are hydrophobic and nonpolar in nature. So these kind of amino acids, they can have a simple R group or maybe a branched chain in the R group. So there are a total of five amino acids that fall under this category, and let us see that. So if you see in all the five different amino acids that have been listed here, this group is same. You see that every thing has having the same group. That is the carbon attached with the carboxyl group, uh, then there is an amino group, and then there is a free hydrogen here. Now, if the R group is simple hydrogen atom, then that is glycine. And glycine is also known as the simplest amino acid. So this is an important point. If the R group is a methyl group, CH3 group, then that is known as an alanine. If there is a branch kind of structure here, when this carbon has two more methyl groups attached to it, then that is a valine. If in the same structure, there is one more carbon added, as you can see, then that becomes leucine. And if you have something like this confirmation with four carbons attached in the R group, then that is an isoleucine. And this is a branched chain here. The next category is um, aromatic amino acids. So aromatic amino acids means that the R group is having an aromatic structure present. Again, you see there are three of them in the aromatic amino acids and they are having this structure common. So there is this common structure in all of the three. All of them are having a carboxyl group, amino group, and a hydrogen atom. Now, if the R group is having one carbon attached to a benzene ring, then that is phenylalanine. And if we talk about the same structure with an OH group present here, with a hydroxyl group present, then that is tyrosine. And if you have this kind of ring present, then that is tryptophan. Now, all the different amino acids, they also have an abbreviative three-letter abbreviation to it. For example, phenylalanine, it's having PHE. So if you see PHE written in your textbook, that means they're talking about phenylalanine. Then we have tyrosine, which is denoted by TYR, and tryptophan, denoted by TRP. So this is how all the amino acids are categorized into their abbreviated forms as well. The next category is the acidic amino acids. Now, what do you mean by that? Acidic amino acids basically means then when in the R group, there is an extra acidic group present. So you see that the amino acid in general is having a carboxyl group present on it. But if in the R group, there is an extra carbo uh, carboxylic acid group, or you can say the acidic group present, then those will be known as the acidic amino acids. Because overall, now, uh, the character of the amino acid becomes acidic. So there are two examples in the acidic amino acids. First is aspartate and the second one is glutamate. Aspartate is when to the methyl group, there is a carboxylic acid group present here. And if there is one more carbon present in this chain, then that becomes glutamate. Next is the basic amino acids. 
it's just like the acidic amino acids. It means that if there is an extra amino group or basically the basic group present, then those become the basic amino acids. And we have three examples here. First is lysine, second is arginine, and third is histidine. So if you see here, uh, there is a four carbon chain present in the R group along with an extra amino group present here. When we talk about the arginine, we have something like this. this there are two groups here that's extra basic. And if you have some ring-like structure here, then that becomes histidine. So these are the basic amino acids. The next category is sulfur-containing amino acids. So some of the amino acids, they do contain sulfur atom in the R chain. So those are categorized under this condition. So two examples are here. First is cysteine, and the second one is methionine. So cysteine is having one sulfur atom attached to a methyl group, whereas the methionine is having two carbons and one sulfur with a free methyl group present at the end. So if this kind of R chain exists, then that becomes methionine. We can also call it as MET and cysteine can be called as CYS. The next one is hydroxyl group containing amino acids. So there are certain amino acids that have an extra hydroxyl group present. And if you can go back, you know that tyrosine was one of them as well with a benzene ring in the R group and attached with an OH group. So that is also one of the example. Other than tyrosine, we have serine and threonine. So serine structure looks like this and threonine looks like this. So these are the hydroxyl group containing amino acids. And the last category is amino acid. So up till now we have studied 19 amino acids and there is one exception uh, to the amino acid uh, that is proline and we do not call it as amino acid but rather we call it as amino acid. Why? Because there is an amine group here. So this kind of um, uh, the amino acid is having a closed chain kind of structure. There are no free amino group present here, but rather it's having a bonded kind of um, group. So these amino acids, they contain amino group, that is double bond NH, right? So uh, this, uh, okay. So what we call it as the amino group, they have the nitrogen present in the ring. It's not free as you have seen in the other amino acids. The amino group here is not free, but rather it is bonded. The second type of category is based on the nutritional requirements. So the amino acids can be categorized into essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids. So essential amino acids are basically the ones that cannot be synthesized in the body and therefore they need to be taken from the outside sources. So they need to be supplied through diet or supplements and they are required for proper growth and maintenance of the individual. So essential amino acids we usually take through the diet and these are the examples. We can memorize this by using this uh, um, trick that is MAT will fly where M stands for methionine, arginine, threonine, tryptophan, valine, isoleucine, leucine, phenylalanine, histidine and lysine. So you, you can always remember it by this mnemonic, Matt will fly. Now, lastly, talking about the uh, importance of amino acids. So there are different functions of the amino acids inside the body, and they are required for the synthesis of several different enzymes, hormones, plasma proteins, and immunoglobulins. As I just mentioned that amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, and proteins are having a lot of roles. Like they act as enzymes, they act as hormones, they act as plasma proteins, and antibodies as well. Amino acids are also responsible for the growth and repair of the body tissues. They are the source of energy when bodies having inadequate supply of carbohydrates and fats. So body starts to utilize them as the energy source for the production of certain molecules. So that was it about the amino acids. In the next class, we will talk about the next biomolecule. Thank you.